You know, every computing paradigm has succeeded or failed on the backs of one thing, developers. We have a pretty aggressive roadmap in terms of milestones that devices are going to hit. We'll be launching our third generation quantum computer, Helios, later this year, and we are really excited about what people can do with it. Helios is quite a big step in capabilities for quantum hardware, both for Quantinium devices and generally in the industry. Helios is now being coupled with the launch of a new programming language. A new software stack that gives developers the ability to develop code more flexibly and more efficiently than ever before. Really trying to push, I think, on what's possible as far as the way that people program the device and how easy it is. It allows us to do things that bring us closer to regular computing. It's all about using these new Helios capabilities. Helios opens up more commercial applications. So we want to make sure that we're helping our customers extract the best out of a Helios system. It's sort of down to us to make those things that are fundamentally powerful at the hardware level, powerful in practice. Which has required building an entirely new stack, which is more general, more powerful, and also more flexible than the old one. It's not only just more qubits, better fidelities, but it's also many new runtime capabilities. What Helios enables and what the new software stack enables is a quite a radical departure from the traditional way of thinking about programming quantum computers in terms of static circuits as these lists of instructions. Now you have to start thinking in terms of I've written in a program that's sort of in constant communication with the quantum device where they're like negotiating back and forth they do a mid-circuit measurement, and then they kind of change how their program executes based on that. So they do these very dynamic kinds of programming models that were much harder to do previously. You're going away from very procedural do A, then do B, then do C, to more conditional and logical things that say do A, and depending on what happens in A, do B, or C. So you end up with a very branching structure, which makes programs more efficient, makes things more intuitive, makes things more complex. The objective of Guppy is to provide powerful, safe, and abstract programming in a Python environment for the next generation of quantum computers. So Guppy, it's the part where you actually program the circuit. Once you write your program in Guppy, compilation technology will take it from there. And then over the network to Nexus, and send it onto the device for execution. The best way to think about Nexus is that it is the middle layer that allows everything to connect to everything, which is what the word Nexus means. It's the meeting point. Nexus has its own proprietary simulators that we run in the cloud that have no wait time and allow users to test their circuits before you go to use hardware. As we prepared for the launch of Helios, we've also launched a brand new simulator in the cloud. It's called Selene and it, it simulates what you expect Helios to be like. The new stack, Helios and, and the rest of the, the successor machines have this new real-time capability. It's not been seen before in other systems. The existing simulators couldn't do everything that Helios could do, so we needed to build our own emulator that could keep up with Helios. Selene is not only one simulator, it's kind of a whole framework that allows you to like, uh, plug different parts together and really explore different ways of simulating circuits and so on to actually submit the, like a circuit or a program to a quantum computer. It's quite expensive, right? So you have to queue for a long time. You know, quantum computers are super scarce. And if, you're, if you can only make progress by running experiments, and you can, in engineering, you can only really make progress by trying stuff, right? The value of online emulators and simulators is you don't have to wait for hardware access. You can try something now. If it doesn't work, you can try something different. And then once you figure out what you want to do, then you can submit to the quantum device. It doesn't impose any real performance cost on the actual execution. And you don't have to make any difficult choices before you know what the answer is going to be. And that opens up this world of experimentation that drives progress. Making that process, the experimentation, research, development, as easy and pain-free and high yield as possible is really important. We are the heart of ecosystems primarily because we have a complete offering and we have all of it in, in the industry leading open source version. Simply put, we do everything, right? So if you're an end user, you can enter the stack at any point you want and we will have the sort of best of big tools we for you there. And so our intention is to give people the most capability possible and let them surprise us with what they find out. 
I think with something like a uh, change in paradigm uh, uh, in, in, the, in the enabling technologies, what you get is new things that you haven't imagined. Yet. Um, and I'd like people to be open to that and, and come looking for the novelty and what they come looking for what they can do now that they never thought they could do.